in the 50s and 60s, I seem to remember, computers were the size of this rock. Then they became the, the size of this rock. They were used for boring things like planning nuclear strikes. And then they became used for interesting things like games and emails. You ask me, how did that happen? Because... Now, there were two things that caused the computer revolution. One was the invention of the microchip. Ta-da! The old computers had been so huge, because all their insides were full of thousands of sort of cables and valves and, and stuff, once the microchip arrived, all these valves and thingamajigs could be shrunk to the size of a peanut. Computers could now shrink, too. But what could we do with smaller computers? Well, that's where Star Trek came in. Small, easy-to-use computers were everywhere in the Enterprise. Do you see where I'm going with this? This is the town of Boulder Creek that lies above the mountains of the high-tech world of Silicon Valley in Northern California. Now, it may look like an average town, but Boulder Creek has one of the most remarkable museums in the world. To find out more, we need to speak to this man, Bruce Dammer. Now, Bruce is just an average country boy. He likes nothing more than tending his livestock, hanging out in the homestead, and dressing like Shakespeare. Now, he may have an interesting dress sense, but Bruce is one of the world's foremost experts in the history of computing. And it's not more pigs he keeps in that barn. Bruce has spent more than 10 years building a collection of computers that span the entire history of the machine's development, from $20 million supercomputers through the rapid development of the personal computers we take for granted today. Reflecting the progress of the biggest beasts in today's industry, and some of the ideas that became extinct. This collection got so big that Bruce shed into a museum called the Digibarn. Hmm, so where did Bruce's love of computers come from? I'll give you one guess. That's right, back in the 60s, Star Trek was telling the world that one day, computers would be multi-purpose, everyday tools. Computer with which we might all constantly interact. Computer, you will not address me in that manner. The sexy, technological innovation of the USS Enterprise had seduced the young Bruce Dammer and a generation of computer nerds. When I was a kid, my brother and I used to lie in our bed and watch Star Trek. One of the things we always noticed, and that I always noticed, was Spock, whenever there was something to really be understood, he would go on the bridge over to a console that had like a hooded screen and look in and blue light would shine on his face. Oxygen, nitrogen, atmosphere suitable for human life support. And I always wondered, what is this guy seeing on this screen? While Spock was staring into his mysterious database portal, the rest of the crew could be seen using user-friendly computers in every aspect of their lives. A revolutionary idea that would change everything. So. All the geeks in the 60s who were growing up saw that and said, we got to make that real in the 70s. And they did. But it wouldn't happen overnight. Star Trek may have shown early computer pioneers what the future might be, but it didn't tell them how to get there. This would take some experimentation. The first attempt came in 1974 with a whopping great blue box that is widely seen as the first ever personal computer. But it's not quite the PC we take for granted today. It came as a highly intricate build-it-yourself kit, and once you had finished soldering its circuit boards together, users would find that it didn't actually really do anything because software hadn't been invented yet. Yes, it wasn't perfect, but for thousands of would-be tech types, it was a start. And thanks to its Trek fan inventor, Ed Roberts, it had a somewhat familiar-sounding name. So, here have the, the Sputnik for the nerd generation. This is the Altair 8800, named after solar system in Star Trek. And directly for Altair 6. Altair 6. Now we're headed back to Altair. I think I'm going to get spacesick. This became the focus of many homebrew and personal computer clubs. Kids trying to figure out how to make this thing useful. And a couple of those kids were Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, and their version of the Altair useful was the Apple computer and Bill Gates and 
and his guys wrote basic uh, the language for this thing and they created a company called Microsoft. So the modern world came out of this unassuming blue box. And the rest is Star Trek history. Armed with their Star Trek visions and very big brains, young enthusiasts like Bill Gates took what they had learned from fiddling around with Altair and set about bringing the personal computer into all of our lives. The guys went on to found Microsoft and Apple, Silicon Valley and the PC industry completely changing the whole world, making everyone rich beyond their wildest dreams. Incredible, isn't it? Star Trek transformed the lives of us all with all its incredible new scientific and engineering concepts. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Well, can I, can I, can I go now? Oh, there's more? Um, uh, sorry. But where did a Star Trek guys get this technological inspiration from? Did we study for years at the feet of Einstein? Did we have some kind of special foresight into the future? Or were we all just scientific geniuses? Well, no. Uh, the truth about how Star Trek came up with all this world-changing stuff is really quite simple. We made it all up. Are you happy now?